is that Paiute's horse. They're going to be letting him out of jail any time now. Some of you and the rest of that bunch can keep that deputy busy. I'll put this little surprise under that Indian saddle blanket. Uh, deputy? Yeah? Boys? When's that Paiute coming out? Well, what's it to you? We got a little business with him. Look, man, we don't want any trouble. Get on out of here, will you? You two, get out of here. Come on. You just bring that Paiute out. And you, get away from that horse. Come on. That Paiute don't need no horse. We'll ride him out on the rail. Yeah, with some tarring feathers to keep him warm. That's right, ain't it, boys? Yeah. 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 We're not leaving till he comes out. Uh, Always a good day when you pay your taxes, Ben. Get Story County out of the red. What's all that noise about out there, anyhow? Well, nothing we can't handle. A friend of yours getting out of jail here in a little bit. A bunch of the town loafers getting together to greet him. Friend of ours? Who is it? Long Bear. Oh. What did he do this time? Well, he stole two corsets. And... <laughs> That's right. He stole two corsets, swapped them for whiskey, and went on a window-busting spree. I know the old guy had that much energy. All right, Long Bear. Two corsets. Time's up. <laughs> you can get out of here now. Mr. Ponderosa. Hello, Lombard. Big Ponderosa. How are you, Lombard? Where? Little Ponderosa. Oh, he's up the street. Good jail. Good grub. Longbear, fine. <laughs> Thank you, Longbear. Uh, See you, Clem. So long, Ben. Hey, hey, hey! You better get mounted. Yeah, you better mount up and get out of this town and don't ever come back here. Get away from me, you dirty Paiute. That's enough handshaking, Long Bear. Come on, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine. What made him buck like that, anyhow? I don't know. You think somebody could have put this burr under his saddle? Somebody sure enough could have. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't my idea of fun. I'll give you one minute to get out of here and get locked up. All right. Would you tell that fire to leave my kid alone, or next time I'll shoot him? Well, he didn't hurt your boy. All he did was shake his hand. He likes to shake hands. Is there any harm in that? He's an Indian, and I don't like Indians. Neither does the rest of this town. Well, except for the Indian lovers here. Oh, come on, Aaron. Look, don't give me orders, Mr. Ponderosa. Oh, I know I'm only your poor neighbor, but don't push me. I'll push you, buddy, real good. Horse, stage just came in. Let's meet it. Long bear, mount up. All right. Come on. Come on. Get out of here. Come on. Hey, did you see that horse buck? <laughs> Joe, Candy, Coach, Ah, Mr. Holt? Yes, sir. Will Holt? Yes, sir. I'm Ben Cartwright. You've got to be our new Bronquester. This uh, my son's horse. Hi, Will. How are you? Little Joe? Pleasure to meet you, Will. Candy, what about top hands here? Will? I hope you brought a wagon. I, uh, I got a couple saddles and, uh, miss a gear. Yeah, we got one right down there. Candy will take you and your gear. Uh... I, I brung something else. My bride. <laughs> what? Miss Holt, step down here and meet my new boss. Miss Holt, how do you do?
that all about? That's Bridger. He's uh, Aaron Gore's boy. They have a homestead down by the creek. He likes to play around here a lot. Well, here's your new home, Moon. How do you like it? Oh, it is fine. Excuse me, did you call her Moon? Well, if you had a wife and her name was Moon Rising Red over Big White Top Stony Mountain, what would you call her? Moon. That's what I decided. I know you're anxious to see the inside of the place. Come on. It ain't exactly a mansion, but uh, you can fix it up. It'll be real nice. Oh, I will fix it. We will be happy here. The best thing about it, it's on the Ponderosa. There's no rent. Hey, look at you. That kid's been playing checkers with a dummy. Why would he do that? He is lonesome. Well, how do you figure, Moon? Only a child without a friend would paint one on a piece of wood. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. Hey, that's real good you figuring that out. I will bring in our things. Well, come on. I'll do that. <laughs> You got back here, that wood box near empty. What's the matter with you? Where you been? Just playing. Been up that Ponderosa shack again, ain't you? What'd they do? Catch you and run you off? They took a shot at me. Who did? I ain't sure. There were three of them in a wagon. Candy and a cowboy and an Indian woman. A young squaw? Are they moving into that shack? I don't know. Well, I'll find out for my own self. Keep an eye on the steel. That jug fills up. Move it for another under it. Keep the fire going. Busted, didn't know we had ourselves a blacksmith, too. Well, I'm a long way from the best, but uh, I fixed a few of them up. I finished gentle in that black about noon. I figured I ought to find something useful to do. That cut's almost healed, but the way he throws that right front hoof, he will cut that leg again the first hundred yards he runs. Well, that's what this is for. I think maybe we can correct that. See, I've got a little extra weight on the outside of the shoe, and uh, maybe he'll tend to throw it straighter and won't brush that other leg. Yeah, that might do it. It's been done before, but it takes quite a bit of blacksmithing. Well, we know a lot more about it after he's worn it for a while. Uh, Mr. Cartwright, I know I just uh, come on your payroll, but uh, we need some supplies. I sure would appreciate a little advance if I could get it. Oh, sure. How much do you need? Oh, uh, twenty dollars. Oh, of course. We well, didn't have to wait until now to ask for it. I figured I'd earn it first. <laughs> oh, one other thing. Could we uh, borrow your buckboard? Of course you can. Why don't you help yourself with some of our supplies, save your trip? Well, Moon needs some new pots and uh, stuff. 
new water bucket. I think we may as well go on into town. Uh, Will, why don't you, uh, Hoss is going into town today. Why don't you go along with him? Yeah, yeah, Will, I'm going in. You and, you and Moon ride in with me. Mr. Cartwright, if you're worried about me taking my Indian wife to town, don't. I can handle it. Yeah, well, I, I was thinking about her. Well, we went all through that before we got married. But I do appreciate you thinking about her. And we would enjoy the company, Haas. I'll get your money. For you. How could you? You've never seen me before. Every day for more than a week, you have watched me from behind those bushes. Like an enemy. I want you to be my friend. But you're an Indian. Indians need friends, too. Sit down. Play with it. You made this by yourself? Yes. That's real good for a female. How'd you do it? With a knife. How'd you fasten on the paddles? With pitch from a pine tree. Oh, where'd you find it? Down the creek, near where you live with your father. He ain't my father. He's my stepfather. How'd you know where I live? I tracked you. You did? Yes. What is your name? He wants me to tell people it's gore like his, but it ain't. Green. Bridger Green. Bridger Green. What's yours? My friends call me Moon. Who give you a local name like that? My mother. The moon was the first thing she saw after I was born. What was her name? Running Deer. What is your mother's name, Bridger? I ain't got no mother. She died when I was little. Can I keep this home? Yes, I made it for you. Could you learn me to follow tracks? It would take much time. I got lots of time. I sneak out on him every day. You do not like your stepfather. He tends me all the time. He whips you? Yeah. But wait till I'm 12 and can earn a living. Then I'll slope out of there so fast he won't know what for. It is my husband and Hoss Cartwright. Come. Say hello. No! Come on, honey, we're going to town. Hey, tell them about the cows, Harry. Oh, yeah, you won't believe this. The first day Ben Cartwright moved him in up there, and my kid comes home says he's taking a bath in the creek. You know what? My cows wouldn't drink that creek water for two whole days. <laughs> yeah, not till the Indian dirt washed out of it. <laughs> hey, uh, you know, Aaron, I thought the sheriff was supposed to run all the Indians out of town. Oh, well, she's a special tribe. She's a Ponderosa Indian. Ain't that right, Hoss? That's right, Aaron. She lives on the Ponderosa, and her husband works there. Her 
husband. No, you mean a squaw man, don't you? I wouldn't call him that if I were you. And what if I do? You got all the stuff you need? Just need some groceries, so. Please, please ride down the street. I'll be right with you. Hey, squaw man! <laughs> I told you not to call him that. Oh, yeah, that's right. You did, didn't you? Squaw man! Squaw man! <laughs> Please. Just a minute, honey. These JoJo's got a few wrong ideas about our marriage. I'm just going to set them straight. Now, my wife's father is a hunk papa Sioux chief. And her grandpa was a Sioux chief before him. And her great grandpa, a chief before him. And my great grandpa was a captain under George Washington. So you might just say this here's a union of two old, established American families. Now, anybody got anything else they want to say? What's going on, Haas? Hi, uh, Pete. We just had to teach these Jehus some manners. Pete, meet Will Holt and his wife. He's our new bronc buster. Will, this is Pete Stevens. Sheriff, sure. pleased to meet you. Come on, Will, let's go. Can't you stay out of trouble? Those dirty, filthy Indians. You let one of them move in here, Pretty soon, you know, they're so thick there ain't room for decent folks. They're decent and law-abiding. And we've got just as much right to be here as you have. Now, if you think you're going to make trouble for them, forget it. Forget it. That's all they're going to do about it. Forget it. We want something done around here, boys. There ain't no point in asking Indian lovers to do it. No, we're going to have to do it ourselves. <laughs> Nice fresh hot coffee here, Pac. Can I pour you some? Well, you know, it's really, uh, really horrible about that grizzly bear getting those 40 steer up there in the canyon, ripping our heads off. And yeah, oh. yeah, terrible. And the lightning striking the city hall, burning plumb to the ground. Paul, what's the matter? Paul? What? You just seem to be troubled about something. What's the matter? Didn't have any dinner, no coffee. What's wrong? I'm off my feed. Paul, what happened in down yesterday, anyhow? I like Virginia City. I like this town. I'm proud of it. Yesterday, I ride into town. A bunch of fellas there, I wave a howdy. They just turn away. I go into the Silver Dollar. Everybody suddenly stops talking. So I, uh, I asked Clem about it. He says it's Will Holt and his wife. The Holtz? Yeah. And Gore is spreading lies about him, stirring everybody up. And now everybody's blaming me for bringing a Sioux and into the Ponderosa. Don't oh, let that bother you, Pa. It's the riffraff. It's not the decent people. I know it's the riffraff. But Clem thinks it's serious about the Holtz. He says I ought to get rid of him. Well, what'd you tell him? Never mind him. Sorry I asked that. I can understand Aaron Gore and his kind. But there's something more than meets the eye here. And what meets the eye is sure bad enough. Put your hands over your eyes. Keep them shut tight. I will.
Track me. so good. I guess I better go. Preacher, I told you it would take much time and hard work. Now, try it again. Use your eyes and think. You gotta cook supper. No. Will went up to the West Fork to look at some horses for Mr. Cartwright. He will be gone many hours. You think I can? I'm sure you can. Will you now show me? Just there in a box. Here's for you. Oh, Richard, I cannot accept this. You gave me the water wheel. You taught me to track. You keep it. Armstrong's pa was scalped by a Sioux. There's plenty of people around here who hate Indians. Why, they'd be glad to help you get rid of them. You might have an idea there, Muley. He's a friend of mine. Go ahead and talk. I came to give you some advice, Ann. You'd be smart to take it. Now, look, this place ain't as big as the Ponderosa, but it's mine. While I'm on it, I don't aim to be elbowed, not by you nor anybody else. I'm not elbowing you, Ann. I don't see you from one year to the next. Yeah, but when you do, you look at me like I was a, a wet dog or a dirty Paiute. I don't look at you in any one particular way or another. If you think I do, maybe it's because you're looking for it. You can make a good living here. Look at this place. Rusty tools, corners and hold, your roofs caving in. But you come here to give me a Sunday school lecture? Because if you did, I ain't got time to listen to it. I got work to do. All right. I'll skip the lecture. Well, I'm purely obliged, Mr. Cartwright. Now, Muley and me can get on with what we was doing before you butted in. Not just yet. I came here to talk to you about something. About my bronc buster, Will Holt, and his wife. <sighs> what about him? You've been doing some talking town and telling lies, stirring up trouble. I want you to put a stop to it, all of it. Oh, yeah, I'll put a stop to it. 
As soon as you run him out of here, Indian lover. You just watch yourself, Ann. You stop putting names to things. The man's a good man. I don't care if he's red, white, blue, or purple. Will Holt's a good man. Yeah, he's some man. What kind of man is it marries an Indian? What have you got against Indians? I don't associate with them. I don't let my kid associate with them, and I don't want one of them for a neighbor. Why? Because they're dirt, that's why. Those are your thoughts. Fine. But you keep your thoughts to yourself. And keep away from Mrs. Holt. If you mistreat her in any way, even peep at her again from behind those trees over there. You'll answer to me. Is that clear? I ain't gonna mistreat her. But remember, I'm not the only one that wants her out of here. I'm not responsible for what somebody else does. Now don't let any harm come to her. And what are you so grinning about? That Ben Cartwright sure got you buffaloed, ain't he? Well, that's a dirty lie. I talked right up to him. You heard me. Sure. Any dog barks big in his own yard. And I noticed you bark twice as big when he's out of sight, except when he's standing right here in front of you. Ben Cartwright don't scare me none at all. He sure ain't gonna order me around. Yeah, unless my hearing's going bad. He just did. And that Indian girl. You have been sneaking around watching her like Cartwright said? I had to see what she was doing up there, didn't I? What was she doing? Nothing, nothing. I've been looking for you. Come on in here. Leave me alone with this boy. Now, where'd you get this? You sure never made it, but I found it hid under your bed along with my hatchet. Now, where'd you get it? I stole it. Where? Up the creek. Well, that squaw made it, huh? I know it was Indian work. What was you doing up there? Just looking around, like you do. Don't get impudent with me. What I do ain't got nothing to do with you, boy. Now, I want to know, you been talking to her? Now, speak up, boy, or I'll rawhide you ragged. You been talking to her? Yes. And what about that no-good squaw man of hers? You been talking to him, too? No, I ain't never seen him but once. Well, you're lying to me, boy. You seen him. Comes home to eat, don't he? You've been eating up there, too, ain't you? No, Aaron. Will ain't home. He's up at West Fork looking at some horses. West Fork. Will, huh? You ain't never seen him, but you know his name. What about her? You know her name, too? Her name's Moon. She made the water wheel for me, and she's learning me to read sign. And she don't smell bad like you said. She smells good. It stinks. So does this. Now, wait a minute, boy. I'm through with you. Now, you've been rooting around in my stuff, ain't you? You've been stealing from me. I didn't mean no harm. You took that charm of mine, didn't you? Now, what'd you do with it? I lost it. Oh, boy, you're lying to me. Now, where is it? I gave it to Moon. That squall, you gave it to her? Yes, because she gave me the water wheel. What'd she say? Come on, boy, answer. She said it was a Sioux good luck charm. <laughs> Good luck, just run out, boy. Don't Ain't no good to run out. Don't Aaron! Get out of hand. There ain't nothing you can do but tan them. But I heard you must have done a job. Well, you tan a kid, you gotta let him know you mean it, right? Yeah, that's the only way to handle it. Whale them if they get out of line. You handle it just right, Aaron. I sure did. You know, Muley, I just decided I had enough of Ben Cartwright telling me what I can and what I can't do. We can get Jonas to ride with us. I'm gonna run that Indian and her squaw man clean out of the country. 
Well, Jonas will go. But when? When are you going to do all this? Tonight. As soon as it gets dark enough. Wrong. Come over so you won't be alone. Thank you. Ouch! Oh, Bridger, I hurt you. I am sorry. It's nothing. Is it your back? Let me see. The skin is broken. Oh, Bridger, did he whip you? With what? His belt. Where is he now? Home. There's some men there drinking. I ran away and I ain't going back. Richard, can you walk as far as the Ponderosa? What for? I want Mr. Cartwright to see this. You do not have to stay with that man any longer. Can you walk that far? If you go with me, I will go with you. Now. Hey, squad, come on out. You dirty Indian. Come on out of there, squad. We'll drag you. Come on out of there. We won't talk to you. Richard, out the back door, quick, run to the Ponderosa, hurry! What's coming to you? It's a gun to me, Squaw. Now you're gonna pay for that. You are Bridget's stepfather. You are Aaron Gore. Well, you know me, huh? Well, you're gonna pay for that, too. When I get through, you're gonna be glad to ride out of here, you and your Squaw man. You teach my kid to steal. To steal from me and give to you. Now, this is mine, and you're wearing it. Take it. I do not want anything of yours. Oh. Run when you had the chance, Squaw. Oh, please! Oh, let me go! Donna, Donna, Iyapu! Donna, Donna, Iyapu! Let me go! Don't hurt me! Oh. Well, I'll hurt you. And when I let you go, you won't stop running till you hit California. <laughs> Monka! Wandiska! Piksu! No white man would know that word. You are Sue! No! My mother was. A dirty, stinking Sue! I spent 20 years of my life trying to get away from being called a half-breed. And I ain't gonna do it anymore. It's too bad you had to find out about that. Just too bad. Because you ain't gonna live long enough to tell anybody. Get her. 
she shot me. We gotta get him to a doctor. Take his feet. Trip, Joe. And only a couple of horses worth messing with. Yeah, well, you never know unless you take a look see. Yeah, that's true. Well, I'll see you in the morning. Right. Will. 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 Will shot him. Shot who? I shot Eric Gore. He tried to kill me. Get out of the house. <laughs> Said you just shot Aaron Gore. Hurry up, boss. <laughs> you all right now? Moon, it's all right. It's all yeah. right. Uh, now you just need some of this stuff. Just a little. That's it. Now, how did it happen? Where's Bridger? I sat in here when the riders came. Well, uh, Bridger isn't here yet, Moon. What riders? How many were there? I saw three. What if it was Aaron Gore? <laughs> I ran it, and he caught me. We fought for his gun. I shot him. Did you kill him? I do not know. Why would he come after you, honey? I found out about him. He's a half-breed. His mother was a Sioux. That's it. Where did you leave him? By a cabin down by the creek. <laughs> take some men. Find him. If he's still alive, take him back to town. And find that boy. He may be in danger. It's all right now, baby. Here. 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 Here's some of Just calm. Take it easy. The squaw shot Aaron. He said she did. He ain't made a sound or a move since he told us she shot him. And he used his last breath to tell us who did it. Well, come daylight, we got us a rope job to do. Cabin's a wreck. I'm surprised they didn't burn it. I found this down by the creek. It is Aaron Gore's. He dropped it. Did you not see Bridger? No, ma'am. Oh, where can he be? I sent him here last night. He knows the way. We must find him. Moon will find him. Mr. Carver. I didn't know she was here. It's all right, Candy. What is it? There's a lynch mob on their way out here. They spent last night working up a hate. I made sure they were on their way and I rode out ahead of them. Lynch mob? It's all right. According to them, you shot him in the back, Moon. In the back? No, that is not true. We were facing each other. We were struggling for the gun. It went off. That's the way she says it was. That's the way it was. Well, I believe you. But uh, that mob doesn't care who shot him or where. Yeah, well, I'm going to stop a few of them. Calm down, Will. Get the rifles. You stay here with your wife. Hey, Cartwright! We know she 
He's in there, Cartwright. Bring up that squad. You came here because you think that Mrs. Holt shot Aaron Go in the back, and you want to lynch her. That's right, we're going to string her up, too. Well, there isn't going to be any lynching here on the Ponderosa. Mrs. Holt says that she shot Aaron in self-defense. Ah, no. We know different. You say different. Well, we're going to have to let the law decide that. We ain't waiting for no law. Just turn your horses around nice and easy and ride on back where you came from. Hey, boy, you belong with us, not with those folks that are hiding that squaw that killed Aaron. Aaron ain't dead. Doctor told me he's bad hurt. But ain't gonna die. The kid's lying. Moon didn't shoot him, I did. Aaron threw down Moon's rifle. She ran away and he chased her. Picked up the rifle and shot him. I heard Aaron say she shot me. Besides, why would a kid want to shoot his own pa? There she is. I will show you why. Let's get out of here. Hold on. Just wait a minute. Would you? Who were the two men that were with Aaron? Them two. Muley and Jonas. They're the ones that broke up the cabin. Muley, Jonas, you stay close to town. I'll be there tomorrow to swear to warrant for your arrest. Start again. Oh, thank you, Hans. You are very generous. Uh, that's the least we could do. Any news, Bob? Well, yeah, in a way. Got a Dr. Bridger here. Young fella, get right up here. Now, Bridger, you're a pretty big young fella. And I'm going to talk to you like you were a grown up man. All right? All right. I've been spending a little time with your stepfather. He's going to be all right. He feels kind of badly about the way things have turned out here. And Bridger, he'd like to go off someplace by himself and start all over again. So the court has appointed an executor to well, an executor is a man who looks after the things that you're not able to look after till you're 21. And that homestead that you've been living at, that place is yours now. Live there by myself? I'm much of a cook. <laughs> well, the, the judge has thought of that, too. And he says, uh, if you've a mind to, that you can adopt some new parents who can live there with you. I can? Yeah. Now, Bridger, can you think of a young married couple that you'd like to have as your new mom, Paul? Yes, sir. I sure can.
Well, now. Moon and Will Holt. Do you accept young Bridger as your newly adopted son? Well, I sure do, if Moon does. Uh, I accept. Fine. Bridger, do you accept Moon and Will Holt as your new mom and pa? I sure do. I think that settled it, don't it? Well, uh, not, not quite. See, the executor has to give his approval. Who's the executor? I am. 